Okay. Hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, so it looks like we will probably just give it a few more minutes and wait on a few more people to join. Um, but this is going to be the API testing fundamentals and lab. So ultimately, we're going to go through a few slides that I have prepped. And uh, then we're going to jump into a lab environment that's been provided by Hack the Box and uh, just kind of have some fun with some of the challenges that they've um, configured in tandem with us to provide some API hackability. Uh, so it should be an interesting afternoon, should be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll just go ahead and, like I said, give it a give it a few more minutes and wait for a few more people to join so we can uh, get everything going. Also, um, you can utilize the chat function inside of the room. And uh, if you have any questions or want me to stop or pause or uh, re-go over something, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, if I could, can someone give me a confirmation that they can see the slides and everything kind of looks kosher? Good. Yep. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, so, yeah, we've got uh, 50 minutes here. We're a minute into it. So we'll just kind of, like I said, give it a give it a couple more minutes, and we will uh, go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so I see some awesome folks have joined. Um, we've got uh, several folks. Uh, Ryan, hey Ryan, how are you? Ryan Rutan, um, Rhett, how are you? Uh, Bruno, thanks for joining. Joe, uh, Alexandra, um, I hope I pronounced that right. T Tinu, pleasure. Thank you all for joining the event. Um, and for those that don't know, Ryan Rutan is the um, Senac Red Team uh, Community Director. And so uh, he is, uh, I'm sure, loving this red logo right now. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a few more people who have joined, and um, hey, Ryan, how are you? Oh, hey, hey, someone, someone approved me. How's it going? Yeah, that works. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we're getting more people joining, uh, as we can see here in the background, and uh, we're gonna hop in and go through some of the stuff. Anything you wanted to say? Uh, no, I've actually started playing around with these myself. I've It looks like somebody, nope. yeah, looks like uh, somebody cut you off. Okay. <laughs> oh, right with it. <laughs> that was great. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so this lab or this, this workshop is going to be over API testing fundamentals and a lab. Uh, for those of you that just joined, we're going to be uh, going through some slides and we are going to... Uh, further jump into a lab environment that's been created on our behalf from Hack the Box. We've partnered with them. And so they've been so gracious in uh, creating some challenges that we can all work through together. Uh, so getting started, who am I? I am Jeremiah Rowe. I'm a solutions architect at Synac. And my background includes time in the Marine Corps, uh, network penetration testing, red team operations, war gaming, threat modeling, all the fun stuff, uh, as well as conducting um, uh, uh, sort of uh, talks and industry um, uh, partnerships with uh, various groups inside of the um, hacking community. So thank uh, Nova Hackers, DEF CON, uh, Black Hat, I participated in AvengerCon and a number of other events. I also happen to enjoy flying helicopters. So I'm a helicopter pilot and the host of the We're In podcast. Uh, so I get around a lot. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you all, and thank you so much for joining. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Cypherflux, and it's mostly just ridiculous things. Um, you probably won't learn anything, but you might have a laugh. So classification, uh, 
on almost anything we do in the Department of Defense or the federal civilian space, we focus on classifications. In this instance, the classification is banana. Uh, we do have a disclaimer here that I would like to point you all to. This disclaimer does not cover misuse, accident, lightning, flood, tornado, tsunami, volcanic eruption, earthquake, hurricanes, any other acts of God, gods, ether, Sam or Dan Winchester, neglect, damage, improper reading, incorrect line voltage, improper authorization use. You get the point. Uh, so, yeah. None of those things apply here, so uh, please don't hold us accountable. Uh, what is an API? I assume if you're in this room, you know what an API is, but if you don't, that's fine because it's magic. No, but seriously, uh, reality is no fun. Um, an API stands for Application Programming Interface. It's basically a service or a server uh, services that use that are used to interact with computers, programs, application. Um, other services, hardware, uh, there's microservices, web uh, in, in the web, there's web APIs, there's uh, SOAP, there's RESTful APIs. There's a number of ways that these things can be utilized and leveraged to interact uh, with uh, things in the background to conduct what you want. So I like to say a server analogy, right? So imagine you're at a restaurant, you're sitting at your table, and there's the kitchen and you and you want food from the kitchen, how do you get it? Well, there's a waiter or a server or waitress, somebody that does the getting of the food for you. The server or waiter or waitress themselves, whoever, uh, they don't necessarily know how the food is made, nor do they care. Their sole job is to bring you that information or that food that you wanted from the kitchen and then get that to you. Uh, that's similar to what an API is. Or is reality fun? It certainly can be, given enough explosives. Uh, speaking of explosives, API relevant statistics. There's a 321% increase in traffic for APIs from 2020 to 2021. I wanted to highlight these before we get into the fun stuff, just because they're so impactful. This information is taken from uh, directly from salt.security, who conducts um, the industries, as far as I know, only relevant um, uh, statistics created around API um, API information inside the industry, right? So a really big resource on, say, a cost of a breach or uh, uh, breaches in general are going to be like um, the IBM cost of a breach report or the um, Senac trust report, if you'd like to take a look at some point. Um, there's also a 681% rise in attacks from 2020 to 2021 over APIs. Uh, there's current legislation and memorandums out there, say uh, Memorandum 2209 from OMB, um, who directly calls out the fact that they're wanting to push people into utilizing more uh, APIs. Um, it's not directly called out specifically, but it does allude to that in many ways by integrations and programmatically doing things opposed to uh, how we've been doing things previously. It's a zero trust architecture, by the way. Uh, so there's a 681% rise in attacks. That's crazy. 75% um, have suffered an incident out of this grouping of folks who've had a statistic, uh, who participated in this, in this analysis. And that's ranging across all categories. And so... 83% um, have no confidence in their inventory of APIs, meaning they just don't know what they've got. And 40% to 80% more uh, APIs were found in conducting an assessment in those organizations than they even knew about, uh, which is pretty terrifying, right? If you don't know what you have, how can you have any kind of trust or assurance in what you've got to begin with? So let's hack the planet. Needed tools for this workshop are going to be Burp Suite. Uh, you can utilize the free community edition, uh, or you can utilize something like the OWASP Z attack proxy, which is Zap or anything else. Basically, you just need to be have a capture packet so you can utilize the developer tools inside your browser. Uh, capture packets, modify them, and send them. Um, and so, you know, you could programmatically do it or just, you know, utilize one of these things. If you're using... Um, Cali, then, you know, you, I think it's already got the Burp Suite free community edition already installed in it. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move forward. 
uh, we are going to first have to register. So in registering, I'm going to go through these uh, slides with you real quick. Um, exactly, Ryan. Thanks. Um, so uh, we're going to go through these slides, and uh, this is going to be the process for you registering to hack the box. So just follow along, and if you need me to stop or go back a slide, please just let me know in the chat. I'm watching it currently, and we will do that. Uh, so how to register to the CTF platform. First step is you need to create a new account and go to this location, ctf.hackthebox.com slash register. And what you're going to want to do is uh, ultimately create an account if you don't already have one. If you already have one, then great, use that. Um, if you have the, uh, if you need any help with that, just let me know. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm going to assume everybody's got this link, ctf.hackthebox.com slash register. Um, you don't need to go there if you've already got an account, just ctf.hackthebox.com. Creating a new team. So we're not doing a team-based challenge, but you still have to create a new team. Um, after you've registered, you're going to get the option to um, there's going to be a couple different options there. There's going to be a create a new team and uh, or join a team. You want to create a team, uh, and then this is going to be a sole team, a team of a team of one. You're you're all snipers now. Congratulations. Uh, so a team of one, and uh, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, I just happen to name it my uh, screen name, Cypherflex. You can name it whatever you'd like. Um, you know. Um, in this instance, CTF best team. Uh, so once you create the team, uh, you can add, you know, team motto, uh, the country. You don't have to use a, a, a Discord. You can leave that blank. And then you click create team. Uh, so once you've done that, uh, you should be able to see which uh, CTFs are there. It's going to jump you into a main screen. You should see uh, check upcoming, it's, it's going to say upcoming CTFs, or it actually should be live now. So so it should show live, and the C CTF you're going to want to uh, participate in is, is, is the API Secure Synac API Workshop. And uh, you will actually go ahead and um, register for that uh, so that you can participate. And the CTF password is these characters here, including the curly brackets. So make sure that you're using the curly brackets. Uh, it's not just the center stuff. It's not just the meat from the sandwich. It's the whole sandwich. So once you take that link, uh, or sorry, once you take that password, enter it, and you join the CTF, um, you should be able to then see some challenges uh, that are there. Um, so you can, um, we're going to focus on a, on a few of them first, and I'll walk through a couple of challenges with you to begin with. And then, uh, we're just going to kind of, you know, uh, given the amount of time that we've got left currently, we're sitting at, you know, uh, thir 37 minutes. We're going to go ahead and let you just hack along and I'll hang out and, uh, you can participate in the other challenges on your own. Um, for the first three individuals, uh, yeah, one sec. I'll go back to the password. Here's the password. The password is uh, the 4P1, including the curly brackets. So make sure you uh, get the whole sandwich, not just the meat. Um, so let me know if, yep, cool. Thanks, uh, Daniel. Um, so we're going to walk through a couple of the challenges together um, and then we're going to just kind of showcase some of the fun, like a couple of the things you can work through. And then you're going to have the opportunity to just work on the others that are available on your own um, to see how well you do. It's not a challenge. We're not, you know, doing, I mean, it is a little bit of a challenge because we're going to give away. Um, thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. We're going to be giving away, uh, I believe, um, three VIP passes to hack the box for a year for free for the first three individuals who work their way through all the challenges. Yes. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to be giving away three VIP passes to hack the box for the uh, first three individuals that get through the other remaining challenges uh, first. 
and we'll be able to check that and confirm with um, Hack the Box on the side if we lose time. So don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, so it should be fun. Um, the next is how to submit a flag. Uh, so inside the challenge itself, there's going to be a flag that looks very similar to um, that looks very similar. Ah, the, yeah, the 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 passes are for a year. Um, perfect. Uh, so for submitting a flag um, inside of the challenges, it's going to look very similar to the password that Ryan shared in the chat. And uh, you'll take that whole flag and then you'll put it into the input hash and click submit. And then you will get credit for completing uh, that particular challenge. And here are the rules. These are very important. So please uh, look at these. These are like your rules of engagement for an assessment. Uh, and I'm just, I'm reading through them all because they're important. So all rules you must follow for the CTF. One, it is strictly forbidden to perform any kind of denial of service or any other unwanted actions against the servers or associated infrastructure. Two, do not try to brute force the flag submission system. Just don't do it. Three, do not perform any unwanted actions against other teams or members. Four, do not try to exchange flags, write-ups, hence to the challenges during the competition with other teams participating and by teams, individuals, or to external entities. Five, do not distribute the content of the CTF, the challenges, to third-party entities for help. Six, all teams, individuals, must be consistent with maximum of one user. So you're a sniper, team of one. Uh, please familiarize yourself with the terms of service in place regarding uh, the content of Hack the Box and the intellectual property. Uh, just don't do any weird stuff. You can read through that stuff after the fact because we just don't have enough time. But just don't, don't do weird stuff, okay? Play nice. Um, nine, let the scoreboard go on and have fun. Okay, and enjoy the capture the flag. So uh, live walkthroughs we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and click this link. And we'll just get right there. Okay, thank you for participating. Uh, this was a great workshop, and I hope you all enjoyed the uh, flags. Take care. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to share a different screen. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, let me know if you can see. Uh, Izoli, uh, I just see your message there. You got disconnected for a moment. Um, if you would like, there is going to be a text file on the bottom left. Um, thanks, Ryan. Separately, we can, there should be, <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> bottom up one second and i will see if i can get you a uh, link so that you can um follow the link for how to register and what you need to do there is the password uh further up in the chat that ryan retain you, you got him ryan thanks appreciate it uh the password for this particular engagement is uh up in the chat a little bit further uh we're going to go ahead and proceed for everybody else just because we are pretty short in time. Uh, so jumping in, we're going to go to the page that you all should already be there. But I'm going to go ahead and open up Burp while we're here um, to get started. And I'm just going to use one of the community editions that I, one of the two uh, that I've got. Um, and as you can see, it is very updated. Uh, so we're going to hit next and we're going to start Burp. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and utilize the browser function. I'm going to use the browser functionality that's already attached to Burp so that I can easily spawn off. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can use, uh, you know, Firefox if you want that's built in here, right? So, uh, and then you can have a proxy that then just points back to your Burp. If you don't have that, you can go into the settings. You can set it to 120.0.0.1. So loop back and then prox uh, port 8080. That'll get you back to Burp. Uh, either way, uh, you should be able to set that up. So uh, you all are already logged in, and I'm going to go to that and uh, open up the 
um, option here for, um, let me see, I'm going to set up a, where is my, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open a browser and minimize this again. Perfect. Uh, and then going over to this, we're gonna turn intercept off, go to um, history and good, we're already sorted right. And I'm going to log in and you log in with your particular information. I'm going to turn this off for a quick moment. Get in, and then I will reshare. Perfect, okay. So, uh, you should be seeing something very similar to this right here inside of the workshop once you log in. And now you can go ahead and join the API Secure Synac, and then uh, you should already have joined it. And now you can click play and that's gonna take you to the page with the challenges. Um, is everybody in this locay? Or is everybody in this location? Thumbs up all around? Cool. Uh, so the first one we're gonna choose is gonna be baby bone chewer, and we're just gonna kind of take a look at this one here. And so what I want you all to do is we're gonna use the Docker option. And we're gonna say Docker on and it's gonna give us our information that we would like to navigate to. So you could go ahead and click that. It's gonna copy to your clipboard, open up a new browser and, or a new tab, dump it in there. And we should be able to see the particular challenge. So this is welcome to the Bone Chewer event registration. Uh, in doing that, I'm gonna come back to Burp and I'm going to right click and add this to uh, scope. There we go. Add this to scope and then i'm going to say um yes because i just want to focus on this uh particular uh stuff going forward and then i'm further going to only show uh, items in scope here because i just want to see that stuff right now without all the other mess so we've got on this page what looks to be uh, welcome to the Bone Chewer event registration. I would like to uh, kind of go back here and see what this is, if it says anything. Okay. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> um, so here's the Bone Chewer information. Let's look at this challenge information. Uh, the devil is enticing us to commit some sandboxed SSTI Feng Shui, would you be interested in doing so? SSTI Feng Shui, uh, would you be interested in doing so? The challenge is started. Okay, so the details of this, the challenge info are kind of here. Um, and we would need to take a look at what some of the information is. Uh, so we've got it pulled up. Let's kind of see what the functionality is. Let's uh, take a look at the um, kind of the view source just to see what's here. Um, it is doing a post with some input, uh, register me, text name, input type, uh, some images, some locations. Um, okay, so yeah, let's just kind of mess around with the functionality and make a reservation under your name, name. Register me. Okay, so name equals register, question mark. Let me see. As we're looking through this information, we see uh, that it's sending over 
uh, through the host. We've got um, a 200 um, question mark name equals. So yeah, let me ask, what do you all think that we should do from here? Any guesses? So ultimately, right, we want to, one second. Okay, great. So let's take a look at the hint again. Okay, so the hint is going to be the devil is enticing us to commit some sandbox SSTI feng shui. Would you be interested in doing so? Okay, so I imagine it's going to be with SSTI uh, because it's giving us that information. Uh, so uh, not just waiting actively, but a watch workshop in the background. Okay. Interested in the approach and techniques. Can you give the hint again? SSTI is in the object. So we're definitely looking for injection. Yep. Uh, test for SSTI. Okay. And uh, service side injection. Yep. 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 Perfect. Let's go ahead and give them one of those a shot. So let's shoot this over to Peter. Say send. Send. And we've got our 200 OK. Let's see what this is going to do. Still 200 OK. Any thoughts from here? I think there's a delay. Okay. So let's look around. Okay. <laughs> and also feel free, you don't have to work through this specific one with me if you don't want to. You can go through and uh, participate in the others. You can jump in and work on other things. Uh, so you can just have fun if you'd like as well. This is mostly to just um, have some fun with everybody and kind of walk through some stuff together. Um, so let's look at the original thing, uh, send that through and look at the request. So in this request, Bone Chewer Con, we've got um, information that deals with uh, the document type, um, the scale, sort of typical information, the body, uh, the organization. So welcome to Bone Tour event registration, image source, right? So we're seeing the same kind of stuff come to the uh, littlest convention ever. So we've got some uh, HTML mentioned there. Uh, there's a debug here. So there's an in debug. Um, Okay. So let's try to change this, I don't know, to like a one, see what it does. We get an okay. Do we get any kind of weird different responses? Um, let's change it to, I don't know, 
multiple characters, like a bunch of different ones. Um, see if there's kind of character limits. There we go. <laughs> like, why did that not come back? Nothing weird there. So let's see. Name equals name. So you got a 49 when you injected that. Okay. So it must be the way we're doing it, right? Instead of just the response. We're doing it here. Forty nine. Cool. So that was embedded inside of the particular thing there. So try the get instead of the post. Well, we're so we're doing the get. Yeah. So we already did the seven X. So I'll go ahead and throw it in there. It changed the HTML that we noticed instead of doing a an error, right? So when we added this here, we get the forty nine that shows up in the HTML there. Cool. So uh, we see that it is processing the data on the back end. Um, what do we want to try now? Okay. So we've got this. Uh-huh. Our goal is to get the is to get the particular um flag. So that just gave us an internal server error. Okay. Or 200. So we know we've got execution. We're getting seven times seven. Hmm, is the source code available on this one? Let's see. Okay, cool. So let's download the source code and let's open it up. And so we know we've got the flag here. There is a flag there. Sorry, cancel. Uh, yeah, cancel. Okay. So this is just fake flag for testing. Yeah, so that's not really what it is. Um, there's the index. Make this bigger. Okay. Um damn vulnerable web app, <laughs> dvwapage.javascript. Um, oh, no, that's a different thing I was working on previously. Okay. So that was the flag that we saw. Let's go to entry point. Yep. Big routes package.
There you go. Docker file. Is slash flag. Yep. So you're saying try slash flag instead of the Etsy pass, which we tried before. And that gives us internal server errors. So one of the things we could do is let's take a look at, say, injection techniques so we've got um, outputs that we can utilize right um, so we could do something like this right which is what we've done which is the um, multiplication of seven times seven And so let's see. So these are the things that we just tried. And say we want to pull a specific kind of file. Uh, in case of the user inputs being placed within the template expression. So would we do ideas? So far, we got 13 minutes left. Okay. Subclasses, 186, Inc. Globals, but okay. So you want to try this one, Pascal. Okay, then what we can do is take this guy out and throw this in. And we get a server error still. One space. So what we want to do is kind of get a resource back, maybe, and get a path. Right? So maybe something like that. Let's try this and see what we can get. Now, let's index.htm. I want flag. We might have to play with these a few times just to kind of see. So that's a 200. Does it give me something back though? Get content. So if we were to take this and copy 
URL. It's just so it's easier to see. There we go. Let's dump it back over to here. Okay, so we don't have this yet, but maybe if we take off, I don't know, a couple of these and just fool around with it or add a few to it. Nothing there. Yeah. So I think we're on the right track here because we want to get one of the resources and pull the content for a particular file, which is the flag file that we saw in that there, right? So copy the flag is slash flag. Um, but we would like it to give us the location of the um, file system. So we know that we can execute math on it. Um, Let's see, yep, right there. So there's the, right, the, app.request.server all join, okay. So, I would say that this is a particular, this particular one is, um, is meant to be an easy challenge. Um, let's go back here to this, which is, well, I mean, difficulty, it's like a two. Note QL inside of the so SSTI would be do okay. Yeah, it's two star. <laughs> okay, let's give this a try and see what we get. Yep. Okay, so deflate text application images. So we're getting some information, like you said, Ryan. So let's put that into our burp instance so it's easier to read. I was just looking at something there. Sorry. Okay. So we've got the information that's here. Get name, app request server, all join. Okay. Yeah, I think we want to share the um, just for others as they're as they're participating. We want to go ahead and share that information uh, for them and kind of work collaboratively as as a group here. And that way, individual participants can also work uh, on their own after the fact. So we've got six minutes left on this particular one, and so we want to go ahead and Google right. There's a TWIG SSTI file inclusion. And as an example, there you go. Thanks, Ryan. 
as an example, let's put this in here and we'll go over to it. DNS lookup, JVM, RCE payloads, method using, so sessions, get attributes, RTC. We're not looking for that. Reflection and invoking, uh, script engine manager, read file, get class, ASCII, and path to the file. That might be interesting. So let's see what that particular one does. No. Oh. Ah. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. So we were actually pretty close on the other one previously, uh, but we've got to pull specific information from the file itself. And so we want to try this particular payload, All right? So, okay. Yeah, let's go back to um, Burp Suite and also this thing here. And We'll do it uh, two ways. We'll just dump it into the browser itself next to name. And we'll change Etsy password to the next track to string, which works. Well, yep. Uh, and then we'll extract the slash flag and see what we get. There's the flag. Nice job. And we'll also do it here in Burp as well. Uh, so we can also see what we would look at from that perspective. And we scroll down and we've got our flag right there. The last bit there is the flag, we will copy it and we will come over to the CTF and we will come to submit flag, dump it in and, oh, incorrect flag. Probably have to put there you go. There's the flag submission. Awesome. So two minutes left. We'll just kind of hang out for the time being. Um, in fact, I'm kind of curious since we're on here, uh, if we can go around to, I don't know, could you pull other things? You can. Pass. <laughs> Emoji voting. So let's see. So the emoji voting is uh, definitely an interesting thing. I would recommend inspecting the challenge um, database.javascript. Nice. Someone got the uh, baby waff. Waff waffles order. So that might be some insight into what's going to be the issue, right? Waff is highlighted. So web application firewall. Yeah. Um, 
And then, so the same file inside of the emoji voting um, reveals sort of non-parameterized queries. Um, so SQL injection maybe. <clears throat> and so inside of that, we've got 32 seconds left. Uh, there are, you're going to see calls. If you're looking, depending on what you're doing, you might want to um, look at all the additional calls that are being made inside of Burp, right? So under your proxy, um, and here you're going to see additional calls, not on this particular one, but it's, you know, might be going to API list or something like that. Maybe take a look there. Um, anyways, we are at our marker. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for joining. This was fun. Um, it's kind of a collaborative exercise that we work through together. Uh, you've got some additional challenges that you can work through. And uh, like we said, the first three individuals to solve them all will get a year of... <laughs> we'll get a year of uh, VIP hacking access to Hack the Box. And Ryan does not count. That's correct. Uh, so thank you all. Take care. Hope you have a good one.